Welcome back. The purpose of this lab assignment is to use Microsoft Visual Studio to enter and run a program in C or C++. You can choose to either use C or C++ for the project, and I'm providing code for both of them, but you only get credit for one project. I'm providing everything for you, all of the code and instructions on how to implement it using Microsoft Visual Studio. As the course progresses, you will be required to start from scratch and all you get is a project definition. Then you have to create the whole project on yourself. This video has three parts. One, I'm going to define the project and say what needs to be done. Part two is how to implement either the C or the C++ code using Microsoft Visual Studio. And part three is documentation. You need to document your report and submit the report to me. Project Definition Design a program using C or C++ that does the following. Read the number of hours worked and the pay rate. Compute the pay, including overtime, at time and a half, and display the gross pay, but not including taxes or any other deductions. Maybe we can make the project a little bit fancier later and include those. Here is the algorithm. Develop the algorithm in pseudocode. Pseudocode is fake code. It's code that's not really in any language. It's more in English. A lot of times the pseudocode is given to the programmer to say, here's how I want the program to work, and then it's up to the programmer to write the code in C, C++, Java, or whatever language is being used. In this hierarchy input process output chart, also called hypo chart, we want to define the inputs, in this case it's hours and pay rate, and define the output, gross pay. Once we know the input and the output, then we need to decide how to get from input all the way to the output. So here we're going to read the hours from the keyboard and read the pay rate from the keyboard, determine the number of hours, determine the overtime hours, compute the regular pay, compute the overtime pay, and then compute and display the gross pay. Next, we want to outline what the screen should look like when the program is running. In this case, since we're using a command line interface, only text will be showing up on the screen. Next, convert the algorithm into code. The C and the C++ programs are very, very similar. The big difference right now at this point is just the input and the output. Right here, I have left some square boxes. They're blank spots where the difference will be for the C and the C++. The first one is the include files. There is a slight difference between the C and the C++. The include files help the compiler build the program. The second one is for inputting the data, and the third one is for outputting. Here is a small chart that shows how the C and the C++ input and output routines differ. The C language uses scanf to input, from the keyboard and it uses printf for output. C++ uses cn and cout. cn for console input and cout for console output. The next part of this lab assignment is to test the program. Since this program can process a paycheck that does not have overtime, like 40 hours or less, and also a paycheck that does have overtime, more than 40 hours, it is important to test both conditions. It's also important to test the program at 40 hours. For example, use these values. If someone worked 39 hours at $20 an hour, they should receive $780. At 40 hours, $800. And at 41 hours, $830. Notice there is an increase because of the one hour of overtime. They actually received $30 an hour for that overtime hour. It's also important to test at 40 hours because what would happen if somebody wrote the program so it's less than 40 hours compute one way if it's over 40 hours compute another way but see 40 hours is not tested because only tested below 40 and above 40 so we need to make sure that we test right at that crossover point also. The last part is to document the project and submit the lab report. I'm going to give you a form that includes most of the stuff already filled in for the lab report. 
you need to fill in the spots that I've left and I mark those in red. Here comes part two of the video, implementing the project. This is the fun part. One, start Microsoft Visual Studio. Two, create a project, call it Paycheck-V1.0 with no spaces. The V1.0 stands for version 1.0. Three, enter the code and make it work. Four, test with multiple inputs. Although it may seem difficult to get the first program to work using Microsoft Visual Studio, it becomes much easier after you've done it a few times. Since this is your first C or C++ program, the steps are very detailed. Make sure that you read and follow each of the directions carefully and don't move to the next step until you've completed the current step. Microsoft Visual Studio works easiest with C++. There are a few extra steps that are required to get Visual Studio to compile a program in the C language. Start Visual Studio. If you don't have Microsoft Visual Studio, you can download it for free off the Microsoft website. Get Microsoft Visual Studio C++ Express Edition for free. You should now have an empty project. Your project should look like this after you click on View in the menu and select Solution Explorer. Click the name of the project and click Source Files. Microsoft Visual Studio comes pre-configured to develop C++ programs. So if you want to do the program in C, there's a few things you need to change. One thing you need to do is change the extension of your program. Instead of paycheck-v1.0.cpp, you need to change the file extension to C instead of CPP. Number two, delete the include file that says pound include quote stdafx.h quote. You don't need that line. The third one is change the line that has int underscore tmain. I don't know why Microsoft put that in. Everybody else just uses int main. So change it to int main and I'll show you more on how to do that. And the last thing you need to do is to turn off the pre-compiled headers. Here are some more detailed instructions on how to do it if you want a program in C using Microsoft Visual Studio. In the Solution Explorer frame, find your program and right click the program and it should come up with something to rename the program and change the file extension from .cpp to .c. For C programs, delete the line that has pound include stdafx.h. This line may not appear in all versions of Microsoft C++ and definitely will not appear in any non-Microsoft C++. So why is it there? Well, because they're Microsoft. For C programs, change the int underscore t main line and make it read int space main open parentheses int space argc comma char asterisk space argv open square bracket close square bracket and close parentheses. Actually you could do that for any C or C++ program in Microsoft or anywhere else. That's really the standard way of doing it. Open the properties page by clicking the mouse inside the Solution Explorer area or just press Alt Enter. Expand the C C++ options by clicking the tiny arrow next to C C++. Click pre-compiled headers and then click the down arrow on the right and select not using pre-compiled headers. Be very careful when you're typing in these programs. C and C++ are case sensitive. That means like a capital A and a lowercase a are like totally different characters. Watch the spaces. A lot of times the spaces don't matter but you can't put a space in the middle of a name. Third thing is you have to really watch uh, where you put the semicolons. A lot of times there's a semicolon at the end of the line, other times there's no semicolon at the end of the line, and we'll cover that in more detail. In the C program, I have a backslash in to indicate end of line. The backslash is a backslash character, not a forward slash character. In C++, it uses ENDL to indicate end of line. So make sure you type in ENDL, all lowercase. It kind of looks like and some might, might look like END1, but it's really ENDL. 
Last thing is really be careful on the curly braces, the square angles, the square brackets, and the angle brackets. Make sure you get those typed in correctly. Include a title block at the top of your program that identifies the name of the file, your name and date, the version, the inputs and outputs used by the program. C style comments start with a slash star and end with a star slash. You can use C style comments in C++ code also. The C++ style comments start with a slash slash and stop at the end of the line. The C++ style comments cannot cover multiple lines. Most of the modern C compilers will also accept C++ style comments. The compiler uses header files that are read into your program with the pound include statement. You may need to include multiple header files depending on which routines you use in your program. The C language uses pound include open angle bracket stdio.h close angle bracket that's stdio.h just uh, spell it out it stands for standard io don't say studio or somebody's going to think you're making movies in c++ we need to include well good old microsoft has that quote stdax.h close quote and that's only for microsoft and a lot of the versions of microsoft if you're using some other compiler don't put that in or you're gonna, your compiler is going to get confused. The next one is pound include open angle bracket IO stream close angle bracket. That stands for input output stream. I'm also using pound include IO manip and that one is so I can do the number of digits past the decimal place. The last thing is using namespace std semicolon. This is the only place on this so far that I have the semicolon. After you've entered your program you need to run and test it. Press Control F5 to run the program when using Microsoft Visual Studio. You may end up with some errors and you have to go back and fix them and then go back and try to run the program again. So if there's any typing errors go back and fix them and then try again. Now there is a thing at the top it says debug and you can do debug start debugging or just press the F5 key and the program will run. The only problem is this output screen will disappear as soon as the program finishes and you won't be able to see the output. So run it and do start uh, start without debugging that's the control F5. Verify that the program produces correct results with and without overtime. Make sure you test it for 39 hours, 40 hours, and 41. You could even test it with 39.99, 40.00, and 40.01. That would also be sufficient. The next part of the project is documentation and a lab report. I provided a text document, which most of it is already filled in. All you have to do is change the parts that are in red. It should be a two-page document. For the lab report, at the top, put down your name and the date and the compiler that you used. Microsoft, Apple, whatever you used. This part's already filled in for you. I want to see the actual values that showed up on the screen, so type those in when you ran the program. Let me know what problems you had when you were creating the program and how you overcame them. Take a picture of the screen. There's instructions here for both Mac and PC and how you can get a screen capture and then paste it into the lab report. On the second page, copy and paste your uh, the code that you used. Don't copy and paste mine. I want to see what you used. When you've completed your lab report, submit it using Moodle. All the lab assignments should be submitted using Moodle. Make sure that you click the correct link on the class Moodle page for your assignment. Select the file you want to upload, click the upload button, and verify that it was sent. This is important. You need to find the correct submit link. Each assignment is going to have a submit link. So make sure you click the right one. Now if you end up clicking the wrong one, it will either end up in the wrong folder or it could accidentally replace some of your previously submitted work. 
Moodle will load a new screen with instructions, a due date, and the Add Submission button. Verify that you'll be submitting your report to the correct location, then click Add Submission button. Moodle then displays the File Submission screen. You can either use the mouse and drag your completed lab report on top of the big blue arrow that works with most browsers, or if you have a problem, click the Files link and find the file on your computer. After you've selected the file, click the Save Changes button. Verify that your file was uploaded. If your file name shows here, then the instructor can see the file. If you want to view the status of your submission, go back to Submit Your Report again, and then you can see what the status is. If you want to update and resubmit your lab report before it's been graded, click the Edit Submissions button. Your old submissions will be deleted and replaced with the updated version. Congratulations on completing your first C or C++ program. You can always refer back to this lab assignment for instructions on how to use the C compiler or use Moodle to submit your work. So, good work and have fun.